In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a very simple floor plan in Home Assistant. Make sure you stick around and if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button below and keep an eye out for more videos. Hi, I'm Will from Will Surridge Tech. And in this video, we're going to be making a very simple floor plan in Home Assistant. We'll look at making the base image, adding some entities, some sensors, and some control over the top. So let's get going. Now this is going to be a very basic black and white floor plan. We're not going to be using any custom cards or any fancy software to create it. It's just going to do what it says on the tin. If you want a more advanced floor plan, then check out my other tutorial video, which includes a 3D floor plan and color changing lights. For this, I'm going to create a very simple floor plan on Illustrator. If you don't have Illustrator, don't worry, you can use Paint or GIMP or any other free software out there. I'm just using Illustrator because I have it and I know how to use it. But I'm literally going to be creating some rectangles, drawing some lines, I might round some corners to make it look a bit fancy, but other than that, I'm going to keep it black and white. Obviously, if you want to make your base image a lot more complicated, then feel free. Um, you can add some color, you can add some texture if you want, or you could use software such as Sweet Home 3D to create a 3D floor plan instead. But I'm just going to keep it black and white with some lines and some squares. Once we're happy, we need to export this image and then upload it to Home Assistant. I'm going to use Samba Share for this, but you can use the file editor upload if you prefer or however you choose to, to do it. Uh, we need to make sure that this floor plan image is saved in the www folder in Home Assistant. We can now head over to our Lovelace. In here, we're going to create a new page, call it floor plan. I'm going to add the floor plan icon here, and we need to make sure it's in panel mode. If it's not in panel mode, then it won't display very well. Panel mode means the top card fills the whole width rather than just being a small card in the middle. Once we've got that done, we hit save and we can open up our editor for this. We're going to add a single picture elements card. Now, unfortunately, the picture elements card does require YAML to edit it. You can't edit it using a visual editor at all, unfortunately, but it is very simple and it's already half filled out for you. First thing we need to do is change the background image. Mine is in slash local slash simple floor plan slash simple floor plan dot PNG uh, because I put it in the subfolder. Uh, you can notice here that www folder becomes slash local when you're referencing it. We can then look at the elements. The elements are the things that sit on top of the floor plan image. So they're going to be our controlling entities or our visual entities to, to see what the actual house is doing. First one I'm going to do is change this from a state badge to a state icon. This just gives us a better icon to use in our floor plan. I'm going to change the entity to my light.cave. And then we need to change the top and left percentages. This is the position across the image from the top and from the left to give it its x, y coordinate. Uh, this will just come with a bit of trial and error and a bit of practice to get the right numbers. So don't expect to get it right first time. Once you're happy with the first one, then copy and paste these few lines of code and create a new entity for a new light. And repeat this as many times as you want to for as many lights or entities as you want to. I'm also going to add a couple of media players here um, just to spice things up a little bit. We can hit save and try it out. Note, when you look at this floor plan, the icons are really small. And when you click on them, then a pop-up appears. Neither of this is really what we want. But if you look at my phone screen, the icons are actually quite big or a good size. So make sure when wanting to make sure that the icons are the right size, that you're doing it on the device that you want this to display on natively, I suppose. So if you're going to display it on a tablet for this interaction, then check it on a tablet rather than just checking it on your laptop or desktop or whatever. Um, if we do want to change it, then we go back into the editor and under the style section, we add a new line and we have transform colon scale two comma two. So that will double the size of the icon. And then if we exit out, we can see that the icon is twice as big, but that will be too big for my phone. So remember that and do it referencing the right device. As for the pop-up, 
we want to change the tap action. So we add a new line in here and we add tap action, new line, action, toggle. That means that when we click on the icon, it'll toggle it. We have to hold the icon for the pop-up to appear to give us more control. To toggle the light on and off. But if we wanted to change the color or the brightness, we have to hold it down for the pop-up to then do that. You could change the hold action or the double tap action to whatever you want. You'll notice in my other floor plan tutorial, I'm changing the hold action to display a custom card, um, but that's not necessary in this. Now I'm going to add some extra entities to make this a little, a little better. Uh, the next one is going to be a, an icon entity. Uh, so this is because the camera feed doesn't have a state icon, like for its state would be streaming um, and there isn't an icon for that. So I'm just going to add an icon that's permanently the picture of a CCTV camera. And you again change the entity ID and the top and left positions. Now we can test it out. You can see that the light icon has changed size, but also moved a little bit. So you might want to go back and fiddle with that later on. We can also see that if we tap it, the light toggles, and if we hold it down, then the pop-up appears. We can also now see our camera entity. If we click on that, then the stream will appear. Okay, let's take this a step further. We're going to add a state label entity next, and we're going to use this to display the temperature of a room. But you'll notice that if you put the climate as your entity, then the label just becomes heat because the climate's state is either heat or off or cool if you've got one of them as well. Um, but we actually want to be displaying temperature. Thankfully, I've got a separate template sensor which extracts the temperature uh, and has its own sensor for it. So we're going to be using that here instead to display the temperature. So the last thing I'm going to add is a service button. This means that if I press it, it'll call a service. The title is going to be morning because I wanted to call my morning scene on. Uh, the service is going to be input boolean turn on, and the service data is going to have the entity ID of the input boolean I want to turn on. We then need to add the top and the left positions, and had I put a dash rather than an underscore like I was meant to, then this button would pop up. We can go back out and check out our lovely work. We can see that the button triggers the scene, we can toggle our lights with the light buttons, and we can see our camera stream. Now this isn't the prettiest of floor plans, but it did only take me 10 minutes to make. So if you want a floor plan that is very quick, simple to use and easy, then this is what to do. But you can also see how easy it would be to make this much more complicated by adding more entity IDs, by having pop-up cards, by having things change depending on the time of the day or the state of something. A lot is possible, but this is just a simple one. And actually, it wouldn't take that much to make it just a little bit more visually appealing just by adding a bit of colour or a bit of customization and thinking a bit about the graphic design of it. So there we go. A very simple floor plan added to your Lovelace dashboard. Make sure you hit that subscribe button below and click the bell icon to find out more about My Smart Tech and how you can build yourself the ultimate smart home.